It is 5 p.m. Central Time on this Monday, August 20th, 2012. The tropics in the Atlantic remain active, and the main focus continues to be 94L Invest, which now has an 80% chance of becoming a tropical depression within the next two days. 94L stands out quite clearly on the tropical Atlantic visible loop with its very broad cyclonic envelope. And the National Hurricane Center mentioned in their latest tropical weather outlooks that although convection is lacking near the center, the overall center of circulation is becoming better defined. We just need more convection to directly develop over this low level circulation in order for them to upgrade this to a tropical depression or tropical storm. At 18Z, the tropical model suite was initialized with 30 knots sustained winds, which is an increase from 25 knots earlier this morning, and the pressure was also lowered to 1,009 millibars. So it is evident that the Hurricane Center thinks that 94L is closing in on tropical depression status, and we need some more convective flare-ups, just like the one that we are currently witnessing just to the southwest of the center. If this continues during the overnight hours, then a classification or upgrade sometime tomorrow would become very likely. 94L is forecast to continue on a general west or west-northwest track over the next 72 hours, but the good news for interest across the Windward and Virgin Islands is that dry air is still well established out across the central Atlantic, and despite there being favorable upper-level winds aloft for steady strengthening, the dry air should at least limit the amount of intensification in the short term, Therefore, although we do expect this to become a tropical cyclone before reaching the Caribbean, nothing more than a tropical storm looks to be the best bet at this time. And in terms of this upper level low, it would enhance the southwest vertical wind shear at its current position, but the models are all in agreement that this upper level low will continue to live toward the northwest, so the favorable upper level ridge that is located directly over 94L should also spread over the Greater Antilles along with the tropical disturbance. Furthermore, we are still seeing favorable upward motion anomalies across the Atlantic Basin, and this is going to help 94L combat some of that dry air. And over the next three to six days, the tropical system will be moving from somewhat marginally favorable sea surface temperatures into an environment that is increasingly unstable as we do have warmer waters at the surface. But with time, we're also going to have to evaluate how much land interaction will play a role in the intensity forecast, especially within days three to five. Here is a quick view of the 18Z run of the Tropical Model Suite. And this was a plot of the 12Z Intensity Model Guidance. And you can see that there is quite a spread here within 96 hours. And some of the more aggressive models are likely going to be invalid as land interaction will start to play more of a factor then. But as you can see, steady intensification is the overall consensus. The 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model continues to show too much in the way of interaction between disturbances in the intertropical convergence zone and 94L invest, and the interaction within those disturbances are allowing for the system to get pulled too far to the north in the short term, and a more northerly motion over the next 72 hours would allow it to be influenced more so by central and western Atlantic troughing, so this run is being discounted at this time. Meanwhile, the latest 12Z run of the GFS model is showing less in the way of Fujiwara interaction between the disturbance and the ITZZ. Therefore, it's implying more of a westerly track in the short term, and it will remain under western Atlantic ridging. Therefore, we do have a track over the Greater Antilles, and anything beyond Hispaniola is a little bit more in question, as land interaction could throw off the forecast track quite a bit. But as you can see in this run by day 7, it has the system re-strengthening once north of Cuba, and we've got at least a tropical storm situated over southwest Florida. The following animation is the 500 millibar relative vorticity, and you can see the overall steering factor is a little bit better. As of right now, we've got a lot of mid-level ridging out across the western Atlantic with only a few minor troughs to the northeast of Puerto Rico, but as long as the system remains relatively weak, it should be able to bypass those troughs while continuing to move just north of due west. And then over the next few days, this ridge should still be able to hold and then bring the system toward Hispaniola. And initially, we still have a lot of troughing out across the central and eastern United States. And although this troughing is forecast to begin lifting out toward days 4 through 7, we don't really have much in the way of ridging extending westward back into the southeast. So with time, we should begin to see more of a slower motion as it rounds the western periphery of the ridge and then start to lift toward the north but the big question is exactly where that will happen. This is the current upper level wind shear, and as mentioned before, we do have the favorable upper level ridge located directly over 94L, 
And according to the latest GFS forecast, this upper level ridge is forecast to be vertically stacked directly above the tropical system throughout the next six to seven days. So once again, the main problem for 94L will become land interaction within the next three to five days. The 12Z run of the ECMWF is more aggressive with intensification over the next 48 hours compared to its run yesterday. And this is one of the reasons why we are going with a tropical storm landfall across the Windward Islands. And as we approach Friday morning, the ECMWF has the center of circulation passing just to the south of San Juan. But by Saturday morning, this is what we talked about. The European is showing more in the way of land interaction and some of the interaction with some of the higher mountain peaks of the Dominican Republic and Haiti is resulting in the formation of a second area of low pressure. This is called a lee side low. It's forecast to develop over Haiti and then drift toward the southwest. And whether or not this actually verifies is going to be highly dependent on how the low moves toward the coast and whether it's directly to the south over or just to the north of Hispaniola is going to make all the difference in this surface presentation. But either way, due to the development of that lee side low, the low pressure systems are going to interact with each other a little bit as we go into day six, and that could easily affect the forecast track beyond Hispaniola, and that is why I am very hesitant to really speculate beyond Hispaniola at this time. But the good news is that at least for right now, the day eight forecasts between the ECMWF and GFS are in general agreement with a gradual turn toward the northwest in the general direction of the southeast Gulf of Mexico, South Florida, or the western Bahamas. There is also good agreement between the GFS and ECMWF models with regard to the synoptic forecasted pattern as we go into days four through six. As we start at day four, we do have some remnant troughing out across the eastern United States, but it's not nearly as amplified as what we are currently dealing with and the western periphery of the subtropical Atlantic Ridge only extends as far west as the extreme western Bahamas or South Florida. As we go into next Sunday, the ridge is trying to build back over southern Florida, but it's a very narrow swath of ridging. And any intense tropical cyclone is going to want to test the integrity of that western periphery. And over time, you can see that the European and GFS are trying to show a bend more toward the north. And although the ridging is trying to reconnect into the southeast United States, it's going to be a big question as to whether or not the ridging fully builds back or if the troughing remains. At this point, this is a seven to eight day forecast, and it's way too early to really speculate on the synoptic details. With that in mind, this is our five day forecast, and as we move on into tomorrow morning, it's somewhat questionable as to whether or not the Hurricane Center will have pulled the trigger by then to upgrade this to a tropical depression or a tropical storm. So we officially just have this listed as an area of low pressure. But as we move on into Wednesday morning, we're pretty confident that this will be a tropical storm and tropical storm watches and warnings will likely be in effect for interest in the Windward Islands and Virgin Islands. But of course, keep up with the latest official products from the National Hurricane Center for more on that type of thing. By Wednesday, the tropical storm should be located somewhere near Puerto Rico. So interest there are also advised to keep a very close watch on this developing tropical system. As of right now, our forecast is just to the south of Puerto Rico, but it's so close to the point to where you would be impacted by potentially tropical storm force conditions. And the day four consensus is somewhat concerning because it places the storm near or very close to the Dominican Republic in Haiti, and Hispaniola cannot deal with the heavy rainfall that is likely to occur over higher terrain, so flash flooding and mudslides is going to be a major threat. By Saturday, we believe that the storm will be located somewhere near eastern Cuba, and the intensity forecast by this time is highly in question. Obviously, if the storm passes just to the north or just to the south of the Greater Antilles, we could be dealing with a stronger storm, but if it also decides to take a track directly over Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and eastern Cuba, then the terrain could allow the storm to be slightly weaker than what is currently indicated. And thereafter, it's too early to make any assumptions about a southeast landfall threat. As of right now, the synoptic forecast pattern is concerning, but we really don't have a good grasp on what the final intensity will be as the storm begins to lift out of the greater Antilles. And also, the track is going to be dependent on that intensity, so it's just too early. But interest across Florida and the rest of the southeast United States should be at least planning for at least some type of tropical action headed your way. The good news is that we have at least a good week to monitor what 94L is going to decide to do. 
and we're also going to keep a close tab on anything else that develops in the Atlantic over the next week. But as of right now, we think that this is going to be the main threat, at least over the next few days. So keep it tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app, as we will be posting more videos and discussions as the week goes on.